Hi, it's Doug Leonard with Patch of the Week, and this is the third installment of a panel-by-panel -panel tour of my mystery serge. And uh, today we're going to look at a uh, panel that's mostly for sound production, and um, it's quite an interesting panel. Uh, not only because of uh, the original selection of modules, but especially in this case because of the great modifications that have been made to them uh, recently, uh, a few years ago, by Kevin Brahaney Fortune. So what I'm going to do first is just show you what the original modules are. Then I'm going to show you what the modifications have been. So starting over here on the left, we have a peak and trough, which is an original serge module. The idea of the peak and trough is that on the peak side, you can input up to four voltages, and at the output, you would receive whatever one of them is high at whatever moment. And on the uh, opposite side, on the trough side, you can again put in four voltages, and the output of it will be whatever happens to be the lowest of it at any moment. Now, I have to tell you that my peak and trough module does not really work very well and never has. Uh, I can't remember which it is. I, I believe it's the peak side that doesn't work at all. Um, but I'm going to come back to this anyway because there's more here than meets the eye. So next to it, we have three original Serge oscillators. These are prior to various NTO and PCO versions, prior to having one volt per octave inputs. Uh, but they are really nice oscillators nonetheless, and they can be made to track very nicely. So just to give you a tour of what the original oscillator had going, it has a sine wave output, and a ramp wave, and the sine wave output also has a wave shaper that goes from sine wave to ramp wave. And you'll notice that there is both AC and DC outputs of each of these, and that's very typical of the surge. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a voltage control input to this wave shaper, so that allows you quite a bit more options for tonal development. And down here, we have two scalable plus-minus voltage inputs. And then down at the bottom, we have the coarse tuning for the oscillator, as well as a sync input. Now you've noticed that I've skipped over quite a bit, and that's because they're all modifications, and I'm going to get back to them in just a moment. The next thing here is three comparators. The comparators have two inputs and then the uh, square wave or pulse wave output. Next to this is something that was added and I'm going to skip over it for the moment. And then we have two mixers. There are three input mixers and the original Serge mixers were uh, uh, very nice. They had this input, which would allow you to take the output of another mixer into here and gang it, or you could just put another in, another signal into here. You just wouldn't have any attenuation on it. So, a typical of the search, there's always a way to do a little bit more with all the modules. Coming after that, we have a ring modulator. Typical of ring modulators, it has an X and a Y input. On this particular ring modulator, both of those are voltage controllable. And then next to it, there's a VCA, and it's a classic VCA that Serge made. And actually, I still love these VCAs. They're very versatile. You have a logarithmic uh, voltage control input, but you also have a linear voltage control input, and when you use together, they can produce very complicated wave shape outputs. Uh, also of great utility is that the VCA will accept both AC as well as DC inputs. So 
not only can you use this in the typical uh, situation where you're using it to control the amplification over time of a sound source like an oscillator or noise or something, uh, in this case you can be using it to control the amplitude of a control voltage over time. And all of those things make these original Sarij VCAs still really wonderful. All right, I'm going to go back to the left again now and uh, show you the modifications that have been done here. The first modification is this row of two knobs and two jacks that's in the center of this peak and trough. It's a voltage processor. It's just like the one that I covered last week, the dual voltage processors. But there, uh, there are three inputs that are plus minus scalable and then a uh, scaled output. It's the same thing here except it's only one. So this is a plus minus scalable input uh, and this is the actual voltage input jack. And then this scales this wherever you would like it to be. And this is the output jack. Now, in a standalone situation, there certainly would be utility for that. But its real use is that it's hardwired over here to the oscillators. And it comes into the oscillators through these row of toggle switches. So these are three-way toggles. In the middle, the way that they all are right now, these oscillators are not at all affected by this. However, if we put these down, and it of course doesn't have to be all of them, I'm just doing that so you see uh, some repetition there of the idea. If you put all of these in the down position, then whatever voltage is going into the input of this voltage processor directly affects these three oscillators or either or any of them individually. If these are in the up position, then whatever is at the output of this processor, in other words, this input after being processed by the scalable control and by the scaled output, whatever's coming out of there is hardwired and is then brought into uh, play with these toggle switches. So that's a lot of power right there that you, you can select in a lot of different controls and influences that you can bring onto these oscillators with just a, fl a flick of a toggle switch and the, each of them operate independently in terms of whether they're accepting these other voltages or whether they're just accepting whatever's happening in these voltage inputs. So what are the other changes here? Because there still are quite a few modifications that were made. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. This pot is a fine tune for the coarse uh, tuning pot for the oscillator. It wasn't part of the original design and it's something that's really useful. The pot above it is a fine tune for this VC input. That also, of course, was not part of the original design, but was added as a modification. We've just gone over these, so moving up from there, we have another very important modification that really allows a lot of additional use and output from these oscillators, and that is this pot controls the volume of an internal mixer that's built behind it here, and so this as, as well as these, are controlling the, the output of this oscillator, the waveform of which is being selected by this switch. In the upper position, this is still the output controlled by that wave shaper. In this position, it's an output that is a square wave and is available from, comparator, from the top comparator. In this position, it's a ramp wave. And so all of this is true, of course, on 
each of the three oscillators. So this mixer comes out of that jack, this one right here. So from that single jack, I can take out, take the outputs of these three oscillators. And that's very, very handy. I do it all the time. It's extremely useful. And another one of the examples of how these modifications are really aimed at live performance. They're useful for anything, but they are really, really aimed at live performance. Okay, so moving over now to these comparators, uh, the one change that's been made here has to do with the square wave that we can get uh, from this switch when they're in this middle position. The square waves come out of these comparators. The output of the oscillators are hardwired over here. So if this toggle switch is pointed towards the oscillators to the left, then the output of these comparators will be the square waves of whatever uh, the oscillator is tuned to. If these are, uh, if these toggles are pointed to the right, then these act as they originally did and you could take anything into these and take them out here and control them with the pot etc. The pot will change the duty cycle and uh, give you various pulse waves. All right, uh, something that's right below it. I skipped over this originally. I shouldn't have because it is an, an original Serge thing. It was on the system from the very beginning it's a Schmidt trigger. In this case of the Serge, what happens here is that if I take, for instance, a, uh, a gate output from somewhere in the system and put it into this input, if that gate output is at plus 5, then out of this output I'm going to get 0. If the input of the gate to this input is at zero, i.e. it's off, then this will give out a plus five. So it gives out the opposite of what goes in. Next, uh, we have here in a spot that, honestly, I think that was blank originally. Uh, we added two VCAs here, and uh, that was a very handy addition. And finally, the last modification to this panel and one that really is a, is a bit of silent uh, genius, although uh, noise, in a way, is what you want, and it's why you really want to have this modification here. What this does is change the phase. And it's possible within the system that you may on occasion have a phase issue. But if you're working in recording studios and other environments where they might have effects cabinets, uh, and various uh, things that they might be running your signal through, the likelihood of having a really disastrous phase issue is quite high. And it is, there's nothing worse. You go into a session, you've worked your butt off, you've gotten a great patch together and sound together, you bring it in, and it sounds like this little wimp thing. And it's because there's a phase issue. And... Um, so, if you ever get around and you have old mixers like this, or, or any mixers that you can't do this with, do yourself a really big favor and uh, make it possible to change the phase. All right, that's a lot of fun stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, a great panel that I get tons and tons of use out of in performance. And that's Patch of the Week.